Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a sprint button for your game. Sprint button will allow you to change between running and walking, and it'll change your character's speed. This is a very simple tutorial, so if you're ready, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is insert a screen GUI into our started GUI object here. And we're going to name that Sprint Button. And then you can go ahead and insert a text button. And we're going to click on it and drag it down to wherever we want. I'm going to change the color. And we're going to scroll down all the way down to where it says text. And we're going to change text scale to true. And you can go ahead and change the color if you'd like, but we're going to change the text to run. If you want, you can also insert a UI corner, which will allow you to make your UIs rounded. I'm going to change the scale to 0.1. Alright, then next we're going to insert a local script. Inside of here, we're going to make two variables. The first one is going to be replicated storage. And we're going to be getting that service using game get service. And next we're going to create a variable that represents a remote event. So go over to our replicated storage and we're going to insert a remote event and name that sprint. And then we're going to create a variable for sprint. Using our replicated storage variable, we're going to do wait for child, which is going to wait for it to exist. And then we're going to put the name of our remote event, which is sprint. And then we're going to go down and then we're going to do a couple of things. Our third variable is going to be a true or false variable, which is known as a bool. And this is going to be named current. So what is our current status? Are we running or are we walking? I'm going to put false. So think of this variable as is the player running and false would mean no and true would mean yes. So we're going to set it to false because by default your character is probably not running. Next, we're going to type script.parent.mouse button one click. This is going to detect whenever somebody clicks the text button that we created. This text button, when you click on it, it'll fire this event. Um, and we're going to do if current equal equals false, then, and then we're basically saying is the if they click on this and the player isn't running, then we're going to make them run. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that the script knows that now the character is running by setting the variable to true. Then after that, we're going to do sprint fire server, and we're going to put current in here just so they know what are they doing now? What do we want the server to do to the character to run or to walk, basically? The reason we're using a remote event is because we're on the client side right now. We're working with UI, which is all client sided. That means that even though this is in started UI, it's inserting this into every player's client so that they can see like when somebody opens up a shop in a game, it doesn't open up for everybody. It just opens for you, right? So we're working on the client and Roblox has a thing implemented where the client cannot interact with the server unless they're using some way of communication, which is why we use remote events, remote functions, or bindable events, or bindable functions. They're very easy to use, and you should get used to them if you start learning how to script. So what this is doing is we're firing the server saying, hey, we're trying to change this player's walk speed. So can we do that? And then you insert our value, which is basically saying, now they are running. We've set this to true, so it'll send through true. And in a minute, we're going to go over how do we work with that. And then we're going to set the script.parent.txt to walk. Since our character is running now, we want them the box to appear to say walk, so we know that we have the option to start walking again. And we're going to do else if current equal equals true then and this basically means if it's if they're not walking and they're running then we're going to set that's a false we're basically doing the opposite we're going to fire the server again but it's going to fire saying we want the pair the character to start walking now and then we're going to do script.parent.txt equals run 
So when the player clicks on this button, it's going to detect are they walking or are they running? And depending on what they're doing, it's going to fire. It's going to change. Since we're clicking on the button, it means we obviously want to change. So we're going to change everything to the opposite of what we're doing right now. And since you're walking here, we're going to run. Since we're running here, we're going to walk. All right, lastly, we're going to go over to server script service and we're going to insert a script. You can name this script sprint handler. And we're going to go over to our local script and copy the first two variables since we can use the same ones. We're going to go back to our sprint handler script and we're going to paste them in. We're going to do sprint.onServerEvent connect function and inside here we're going to have two parameters and they're going to be one for our player since when you fire um, a remote event to the server it's automatically going to include a variable for the player since the player is the one that's firing it you need to know which one is doing it so we're going to put player and then we're going to put the name of whatever we want to represent the true or false value we sent which i'm just going to keep it the same current um, it's easier to um, it's easier to keep things not confusing, I guess, if you keep them the same. So that's why this is the same. So when we fire the server, it's going to automatically send who's firing this thing, which is our player variable. And then we're also sending our current, which is going to be true if in the, if this is the case, and then false if this is the case. So in our thing, we're going to detect oh, is this true or is this false? So that's how we're getting. The same way we're getting this from here, we're basically getting this and we're going to get it in this script. We're getting it from here instead. First, we're going to do local character equals player dot character. And then we're going to do if character then and basically saying if the character exists then we're going to continue because if they're dead or they don't exist for some reason, then it, your script can error and things can go wrong. And we're going to do if current equal equals true, then character.humanoid.walkspeed. Make sure that the W and the S in walk speed are capital and the H in humanoid is capital. We're going to set this to whatever you want. This is the run speed. I'm going to set it to 30. For comparison, the default walk speed is 16. Then we're going to do else if current equal equals false, then character.humanoid.walkspeed equals 16 there then if we go ahead and go to test hit our play button we should see that it works all right so if i go ahead and hit this button we should start running hit it again we should start walking and lastly to make sure that everything is running smoothly go ahead click up here click your reset character and click reset you should be able to reset and still use the GUI. It should remain on run. And then we'll go and it'll reset your character. And if it's not working, make sure that in your starter GUI, the UI element, the screen GUI, that reset on spawn is true. And what this does is when your character respawns, it's going to basically copy this GUI back into their character, which is what happens when the game starts. We hit play. I'll show you exactly how this works. If you go to start a GUI, you're not going to be able to edit the character's button. You actually have to go to player, pixel zombie X, player GUI, and then find the script button here. And this is this button. Oops. Um, so when it's reset on spawn, it'll delete it. And then it'll recopy it into it like that so that it's all ready to go because when your character responds it's not going to save if they were running or not so they're going to have to redo it all right i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing i'll see you guys in the next video